Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint where it's time for today's art back project so sit back as versatile landscape and wildlife artist David Hyde throws some light onto how you can use watercolour to add a touch of brilliance to the darker areas in your painting. Sometimes you will need to apply a little light paint over a darkened area of your picture. Uh, so today I'm going to show you a couple of uh, ways that you can just bring a little life back into a, a dark area. Um, I've pre-painted this um, a tree scene here. I feel it would be nice if I could bring out some branches, light branches, in some of these dark areas or even light leaves. But I'm going to start with the branches and if the branch comes out it'll catch a little bit of light. So what I tend to use for this, um, being a watercolourist, I rather like to stick to watercolour. And so I use opaque watercolours. That's not gouache, but it's watercolour that's opaque. Not all watercolour is transparent by any means. Uh, some is opaque. Um, if you're unsure which your, um, which your colours are, you can always check online with the SAA if you bought them from the SAA or from wherever you bought them. They will give you the information about the transparency or opacity of each of the pigments. These ones I have here are um, a few sort of common uh, opaques. This is Naples yellow, pretty much always opaque. Cadmium orange, cadmiums are um, uh, normally opaque or always opaque, cadmium yellow, and a cobalt green, which is one of the few uh, opaque greens. Here I actually have cheated a little bit because that's a bit of designer gouache permanent white. Now, there are some good whites um, in the uh, artist's range of watercolours, but the gouache is a little less expensive, so I've cheated a bit there and got some gouache, but it is an opaque watercolour. Now, when you're applying opaques, all the things about making washes and the way you normally paint watercolours, you don't have to worry about. This wants to sit on the surface of the paper and you want to see it light against that dark background. So you only want just enough water in here so that you can paint it and keep control. So I'm mixing a little of the uh, Naples yellow with some of the cadmium orange. Both of these are opaques, so the result will be opaque. Not too much water, because if you put too much water in it, you make this transparent and then some of that dark will dull it down. Now you can use a little white here if you want it lighter, because you can't use water. So I can make that a little lighter if I feel it needs lifting. And I'm making just this little, little area there of quite sticky paint, but it needs, as I say, just test it because you need to, to make it flow. I quite like doing these little branches with a rigger. This is a number naught rigger, so I get a, a fine line on that. And I simply just, if I've got it right, it should produce a nice light line and just lift Okay, that dark, just add a little something in the dark. The colouring is very similar to the colouring here of the wood in the light. As it dries, it will dull down a little, so um, don't worry about it straight away. And I will address any little area. That's a little dry, actually, because that dragged a wee bit, so a touch of water. Um, if you're working in a warm room, this will dry out, so you'll have, you always have to keep adjusting the amount of water Okay, so you can add little bits, or you can add little bits coming out there, or anywhere you want to add a little bit of light uh, into a dark area. Uh, the tip with this um, is don't overdo it. It's likely you get carried away with this, and you can transform the look of the painting and um, destroy that watercolory look. So if you can do it without really noticing you've done it, that's really the best way of doing this. I can soften that out. A little bit if I wish just to subdue it a little bit more I can just wet it and soften it back into there but otherwise that will dry and that will look perfectly good over the top. Uh, you can add extra leaves I'm going to do a little bit with the cobalt green and um, let's take a little of the cadmium yellow which makes a very bright green actually so I'm just going to dull that down with white because white is actually cool and just take a bit more cobalt green in. And if I wanted to put a few more um, leaves against the dark here, I can simply just lighten or make lighter an area that's 
just lost, I've just overdone the darks perhaps, and I want to get a little bit of sparkle back into here, just randomly dot a few leaves. Again, don't overdo it, but this colour is very similar to the colours in here, and so it should match in quite nicely. Okay, so it's quite a useful way of using your watercolours or using the properties of your watercolours to create an effect. The other way is to lift out. Now, this is a, a commonly used technique. I don't do it any differently from anybody else, but I do use um, these Galleria brushes because the hair on them, or the, the um, synthetic fibre, is much stiffer than watercolour. So you can actually have a little uh, scrub on your paint, and it loosens the painting uh, more effectively than a soft brush. Um, so I'm going to lift a little out just to show you. I'm going to take, try and get a dead branch to come out on this side, against, on the dark here, okay? And, um, and I want this branch to look sort of dead and light against the dark leaves. So just with uh, clean water and a tissue, I'm going to, with my brush loaded with clean water, is just rub away at an area and make it in the shape of a branch and then just lift that, just lift that out. Now, I could scrub that a little more and make it a little lighter if I wanted. Um, I could leave that as shadow and then perhaps scrub a little more out here. Just bring it down and then it adds another little layer of texture, if you like, and interest. It lays an area of interest, but it also gives you the opportunity to t treat a, an area that's gone perhaps a bit too dark and add a little bit of light into it. Now, a lot of people think that once you've done that, You've done it, that's it. But you can just paint that. So if I wanted a little blue shadow in there, let's say to make it look a little cooler, I'll take a light wash, because I don't want to make it dark again, of blue, and just add a little cool blue here and there to just tone it down a little bit. Perhaps I've toned it down too much, so again, just lift a little bit of that out. Just get a, bit, a little bit of light back there. So it's one of those techniques that is interesting. It's simple to do, but you can make more of it just with a little thought and applying a little, little light, in this case, a little shade, a little bluish shade over here. If you did it here, perhaps you, when you got it back to the whitish paper, you could apply a sort of uh, a transparent yellow or a, uh, a color like that over here just to pick up a bit of sunlight. Anyway, two simple ways of creating an effect of light over dark. Thanks David, painting from dark to light can help give you real deep rich results, especially if you paint the darkest colours first. And then mid-tones and use your background paper to introduce flashes of bright white light. Right folks, it's time for us to take a little break now, but join us in part three when popular art instructor Marion Dutton returns to work her way with oils to complete part two of today's Try Your Hand Up project. <laughs>